Uh, let's be honest. I mean, this has been the worst postseason that I can remember in a long, long time. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I don't ever remember something that was so lopsided. You know, I mean, it, look, in October we knew it was going to be Warriors and Cavaliers, right? I mean, I don't think anybody was delusional as to uh, uh, how who was going to be in the finals. Uh, but 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 like I said, where's where's been the uh, uh, where's the competitiveness of some of these teams? You know, it, it really seems to have been uh, uh, sucked right out of them. You know, I thought Utah might have given uh, uh, a decent series to the Warriors just because of the style of play. Um, you know, you, you thought, of course, uh, San Antonio before the injuries uh, uh, was was going to be able to, but then you have the injuries, uh, and of course, nobody in the East has had any answer for the Cavaliers. Uh, the Celtics had. You know the one game, of course, in Game Three. I don't expect them to repeat that. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 sort of been a snoozer. This is uh, uh, the NBA's nightmare, <laughs> and 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 I think that 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 they're just keeping their fingers crossed that uh, uh, that the finals will finally uh, uh, provide us with something worth watching. Well, let's talk about the inevitable matchup between the Warriors and Cleveland. We saw this last year, and I was thinking about this this morning. Had it not been for Draymond Green, I remember the feeling watching uh, Golden State take the lead, and it looked like Cleveland, they knew that it was inevitable that they were going to lose that series, and obviously things turned. Well, Golden State comes back. They didn't win 73 games this year, but they added Kevin Durant. So I tend to think that it's actually going to be a mismatch. Do you believe that's the case? I mean, Golden State right now, they're averaging a 16.3 margin of victory in, throughout yeah. the playoffs. I mean, they're just pounding people. And then I was surprised yeah. to see they've won 27 of their last 28 games. They are rolling. So as good as Cleveland's playing, I just – And I think a lot of people have got caught up in the fact that, that, that the Cavaliers have been – postseason, that they rolled through, uh, you know, had some tough challenges with Indiana, but won all, all four of those games and, and just rolled through Toronto and, and, and the first two games of this series – uh, and 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 thus think well you know now now they look uh, uh, like like they're the defending champs again and that that Golden State's going to have trouble getting past them. I'm with you. I what, what I recall from last year and then sitting there watching all those games and 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 seeing as you say the momentum change there. Uh, you know they were a Draymond Green flailing kick away from uh, you know winning that thing in five. Now you add Kevin Durant, and and you know at the very least, if if you don't want to say okay, that then they might have won that thing in five without without Draymond Green, but with Kevin Durant. Think about Game Seven, where where the Warriors didn't score for the last four minutes, and if you remember, they were gassed and they were back there just jacking up threes. Nobody brought the ball to the basket. Nobody found that that little corner, that that little elbow jumper, <clears throat> that 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 Kevin Durant loves so much. So now you get in that situation, and Kevin Durant is going to find a way to score. He's not going to stand back there and jack up threes. So to me, yeah, I, I understand a lot of people have been enamored with of, uh, of Cleveland and the way they've played, uh, but but to me, this matchup, you know. Know, is is these are the same teams that were in it last year, except now one of them's got Kevin Durant. I'm going to go with the one that got Kevin Durant. All right, let's shift and talk about the Washington Wizards because they had a nice run. We're here, of course, in D.C. It was a lot of fun. Of course, they fell short in Game 7 against the Celtics, and we mentioned this earlier. John Wall says that he wants to hear the plan before he decides to sign this Supermax deal, and I joke, well, the plan is they just have to add a bench. Well, the plan they don't have a bench. The plan should be sign the deal immediately. It's four <laughs> years, one hundred sixty-eight million dollars. Yeah. How do you see things playing out this off season for the Wizards? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know they're they're kind of the poster child for what's wrong with the NBA and and, and the salary cap and all that because. Uh, they're they're going to have to shell out quite a bit of money uh, to keep all three of their top options. You know, John Wall, Bradley Beal, uh, and 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 also Otto Porter, the restricted free agent. Uh, and once you do that, you're going to be so far over the cap and, and into the tax that it's going to limit the rest of your team. And and you know the the way things are set up in the NBA is is. <clears throat> It, it, it allows, it even encourages teams to be top-heavy, uh, and then you're looking at the rest of your team, and, and, and you, you know, you've got to get lucky in the draft. You've got to get lucky and find, uh, uh, you, you know, a bargain player here or there who can chip in. If you don't have it, and we, and we saw this during the playoffs, the Wizards were desperately lacking in depth. Uh, you know, if you don't have that, then, then, then that's going to hurt you, and, and I think that's going to be, continue to be the case, so that, that they're going to commit uh, to their three top options. Uh, and then sort of be stuck 
just trying to fill in the gaps in the rest of the roster. Uh, and, and, you know, if you don't, if, if one of those top options isn't LeBron James, it, it does put you at a, uh, uh, at a disadvantage. And, and, and I think that that's going to be the situation that, uh, uh, that the Wizards are going to find themselves in where, where yeah, okay, you're going to keep those three guys, but, but what about the rest of the team?